more of Constell English. This is your host, Nancy Pasqua. Do you remember what you learned in the previous episode? Remember the two scenarios presented to you showing how a teacher viewed writing? Let us recall briefly what those two classroom scenarios were about. In the first scene, the teacher seemed more concerned with the end result of the writing activity rather than the means to achieve it. What do you call this approach to writing? Yes, product. In the second scene, and like the first one, the teacher saw to it that students had to undergo several stages of the writing process before they could produce a piece of writing. What approach to writing is this? Right. Process approach to writing. The two scenarios view writing as product, which is linear, and process, which is recursive. Let us take up the features of the process approach. This approach sees writing as non-linear, which means that the steps need not be followed in the same sequence. Recursive, which means that it is repetitive, and generative, which means it involves several steps or stages. The following diagram illustrates the flexible and recursive nature of the writing process. What have you observed about the first three stages? Why are they within the small circles? And look at the arrows. What do they suggest? The circles and the arrows suggest the flexibility and recursiveness of the writing process. As you can see, the last stage is located outside the three circles, but is still within the big circle along with the rest of the stages. Based on what we have discussed, what then is the process approach to writing? I'll give you the answer to this when we return. We stand by. Welcome back. A process approach to writing sees writing as a non-linear, recursive, and generative process that involves several steps or stages, starting first with pre-writing where ideas are generated via various resources or methods, drafting to discover what one wants to say, revising and proofreading getting feedback from various readers between revisions, writing again, and finally, publishing and presenting the output. Now, will you tell me again the four basic steps or stages in the process approach to writing? They are pre-writing, drafting, revising, and proofreading, and publishing and presenting. We are now ready to take up the first stage in process writing, pre-writing. What does pre mean? Pre means before. And what does pre-writing mean? Let me take you to a class where a teacher conducts a pre-writing activity. Class, have you enjoyed the field trip that we had last Saturday? Yes, Why, Maya? Ma'am, um, I wish we had gone to other places of interest outside of Manila. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by that, Maya? Well, ma'am, my classmates and I were thinking of going to Dr. Jose Rizal's place in Calanga, Laguna. That would have been wonderful, but you know, we just didn't have the time. That would call for a second field trip. Anyway, we will keep your suggestion in mind. I'm happy to note that Maya here mentioned the name Rizal. Everyone here knows that he is our national hero. Yeah. Today, we shall take up a topic that is related to the word hero. What are the things that come into your mind when you first hear the word hero? Hmm? 
I would like each of you to get a piece of paper and a pen. And then write as many words and phrases as you can which you normally associate with the word hero. Okay? Remember class, you have to do this by yourself. No copying. And do not share your items with anyone. Okay? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let me start now. did the teacher ask the students to do? Apparently, she made them brainstorm on the stimulus word hero, individually or interpersonally. How did she do this? Let's go back to these scenes. She did the following. First, she asked the class to focus on the stimulus word hero. Then, she asked them to write down as many words and phrases as possible which they could associate with the stimulus word. Finally, she asked them to hold on to their lists. What then is brainstorming? Brainstorming means to search the brain for ideas. When we ask our students to brainstorm, we can tell them to, one, write down their ideas very quickly. We may even tell them that these ideas don't have to be written in English. Number two, Tell them not to worry about how useful their ideas will be. Number three, neither should they worry about grammaticality, organization of ideas, and punctuation marks. Four, tell them not to worry about neatness and correctness. Take a look at this sample preparation by a student who tries to map out his future plans. Crew member, McDoor or Jollibee, in school in the a.m., can work afternoon, no problem. Mother, like this idea, can give brother, sister additional baon. Tatay will be happy too, I am sure. I can take evening shift also, but not very late. Homework, so much to do. Did you notice the telegraphic thoughts written down? The writer wasn't careful about any other thing except for the ideas he wanted to include in his composition. Take a look at these sample stimuli which can make your students prepare for writing. Tell them to write down as many ideas as possible about any of them. Be sure to remind the students to keep their notes for use in drafting their compositions later. These are only a few of the many stimuli which our students can brainstorm on. When students brainstorm individually, they are actually speed writing. Speed writing is a warm-up activity which can get our students to write freely. There are other important points which our students have to bear in mind when they do speed writing, and these are the following. One, they have to give themselves a time limit, say two times. Two, they have to write as much as they possibly can on a given topic. Three, they can write whatever comes into their minds. It doesn't matter if the ideas don't make sense. Four, make them write until the time is up. Five, tell them not to worry about correctness and neatness. Take a look at this sample letter segment written to a teacher about a child's problem. Observe the candidness of the letter. The text is said here. Pearl seems to be very unhappy this year. Don't really know what the cause is, but I feel I have to find out. Maybe other students in the class. Perhaps the teacher knows. Seems to be able to cope with it. Okay with the work. Does her homework well. Seems not to be affected by it. Although I think she has problems. But no communication between us. She avoids me everywhere. Canteen, corridors, hallways, school grounds. Everywhere I don't know what to do. Perhaps, what do you say about that? 
Indeed, speed writing is a sure way of getting our students to write freely. We will take up another activity on brainstorming when we return. Don't go away! still another way of making our students prepare for writing and this is by asking of themselves WH's questions. This idea is good for longer pieces of writing. What do we tell our students to do if we go by this technique? We should tell them to one, write down some questions about the topic such as who, what, where, when, why, how. Two, think of as many questions as you can. Let's look at a sample list of WH's questions. One, what is the problem? Two, who are affected by it? Three, what is causing the problem? Four, where is the problem at its worst? Five, how can the problem be resolved? Six, when is the best time to resolve it? You can imagine the enormous answers a student can give to those questions. The activity can certainly generate a lot of ideas, can't it? Let's listen to Liza's thoughts as she thinks aloud on the topic, taking the first plane ride. Hmm. What things will I take with me? Do I need the money to buy a new pair of pants? How about a new pair of traveling shoes? When will I buy my plane ticket? Who will take me to the airport? How will I behave inside the plane? Do they serve food inside the plane? What food should I take with me so that I won't go hungry? Hmm. Once again, can you imagine the enormous data Liza can incorporate by merely asking of herself those questions? Another example of a brainstorming activity is cubing. Cubing is brainstorming activity where students generate ideas individually based on a given set of guidelines. Take a look at this classroom scene where a teacher asks her students to brainstorm on a topic using cubing. Class, could you give me once again the topic which we would talk about today? Do you remember? Yes, Mark? Um, I think we opted for the topic smoking, the great killer. Yes, I think so too. Well, today, class, I would like you to write down as many things as possible regarding the topic smoking, okay? But please, be guided by the following guidelines. Here are the guidelines. Here are the guidelines that are written on the board. First, describe it. Okay, you can ask questions like, what does it look like physically? What do you see? How does it smell, feel, taste, sound? Okay, and then after that, compare it. What is it similar to? What is it different from? Class, do you follow? Afterwards, analyze it. What is it made of? What are its parts? How are they arranged? Okay, afterwards, associate it. What does it remind you of? What do you associate it with? What stories, events, or situations come to mind when you think of it? Okay, and then for the fifth guideline, apply it. What can you do with it? What can you use it for? What unusual applications can you, can you think think of for it? And lastly, argue for or against it. You can take any position. Actually, you can give any reason you can think of, even crazy funny ones. Okay? Now, class, get your pen and paper. 
You may now get your pen and paper. And remember, please, to refer to the guidelines. The questions are now written on the board. That was cubing, a brainstorming activity where individual students are motivated to generate ideas based on a given set of guidelines. There is no reason why they can't come up with compositions. Let's go back to the classroom and listen to Jeffrey as he reads his work to the class. Jeffrey, I can see that you have written a lot of things about the topic smoking the great killer. Would you like to read your work in front of your classmates? Sure. Kindly come forward and then read your work. Class, as you listen to Jeffrey, relate the parts of his composition to the guidelines written on the board. Okay, are you ready, class? Yes. Okay, Jeffrey, we now begin. Smoking is indeed a sure killer. One stick of cigarette contains a lot of tar and nicotine. The very elements that can kill the active, more so the passive smokers. I do not know why so many of my friends smoke. For one, I don't like its smell. It gets into my nerves. Neither do I like its taste. I felt like throwing up once my friend asked me to taste it. You can imagine the elements that go into one stick of cigarette, tar and nicotine, and maybe others. One stick times 24 sticks a day, times 365 days of the year, times 50 or 60 birthdays, one will certainly die by the time he reaches his or her 61st birthday. If one wants an easy way out, he or she had better start at an, at an early age. But who among us wants to die young? That was very good, Jeffy. Thank you very much. Shall we give him a big hand, class? Wasn't that great? If teachers would only realize how important it is to make their students go through pre-writing activities, then they will not have any problem of asking their students to put in the appropriate content in their compositions. Yet, still another brainstorming activity which is done individually is called mapping. It is similar to clustering and cubing because it enables the learner to generate ideas on its own. It likewise allows the learner to let his imagination run free based on a given topic. Look at this sample set of items generated by the topic, my brother. My brother, tall, 25 years old, handsome, fair, complexion, eyes brown, has a beard, hair is black, he is single, he is skinny, he is gentle and kind, he is sensitive, he is affectionate. Sometimes he is childlike, he is calm and quiet, he loves me very much. He is my best friend. My feelings for my brother, I love him so much I am his best friend now. I am sad because he is not with me. He is married with one baby girl, but I still love him. What else will students ask for? Don't they have enough data to write about? Do you now realize how important it is to make our students go through pre-writing activities before they do actual writing? We will make a recap of what we have discussed so far when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back. What have we learned so far? One, brainstorming, which means storming the brain for ideas, is one sure way of generating ideas. Two, brainstorming can be individually or intrapersonally done. Three, speed writing, 
asking WHS questions, cubing and mapping are sample brainstorming activities. Let us take up yet another brainstorming activity which can be done individually and this is by looping. What is looping or loop writing? Looping, which is the most complex approach to free writing, involves writing to find out what one wants to say in a certain topic. It is a semi-structured individual activity which requires writing for a certain period of time without stopping. Let's find out how a teacher employs this technique in the classroom. Class, I would like you to write down your thoughts as freely as possible on the topic smoking the great killer for five minutes without stopping. Okay, you need not worry about your grammar or your punctuation marks or the neatness and the correctness of your work. All you need to do is to let go of your ideas and thoughts on the topic. Uh, yes, Sheila, I have a question. Oh, when do we have to write down words or sentences? That's a good question. It is ideal to come up with sentences because I expect you to come up with a summary statement. Yosel, I have a question. What's a summary statement, ma'am? Well, as the name implies, it is the summary of your thoughts and ideas in loop one. Now, class, get your pen and paper and write down your thoughts on the topic smoking the great killer. You will be given five minutes to do so. Let me begin now. What then is the first step in loop writing? First, make students write on a given topic continuously for four or five minutes. Preferably, they could come up with sentences so that it will be easier for them to arrive at a summary statement. Let's go back to the classroom and see loop two. Well, I guess everyone has written much about the topic. Let us now proceed to the second round of the activity. Okay, class, what I'd like you to do is to read what you have written and then focus on your summary statement and then let this be the basis for your second summary statement for loop two, okay? You're once again to be given five minutes to write down your thoughts based on your first summary statement. And when you are done, be sure to come up with a second summary statement. This, because I shall ask you once again to write about it for the third loop. Ready? Okay, you may now begin. What is the second loop about? What did the teacher ask the students to do? Apparently, she made them reread what they had written down. Second, focus on the summary statement. Third, write their ideas on the first summary statement continuously for another five minutes. Join me once again in the classroom and see the rest of the lesson. Now that you are finished with your second summary statement, let me ask you once again to focus on it and then afterwards write down as many thoughts and ideas as possible about it. Okay, Yasa, would you like to share your second summary statement? Yes, ma'am. Smoking can really lead to an early death. Just like Yasa, I would like you to use the second summary statement as basis for the third loop. Okay, are you now ready? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay, you may now begin. Notice that the teacher observed the same steps in making her students generate more ideas. I am sure that by the end of the third loop, the students will have become better prepared to write their full-blown compositions. Let us summarize what we have talked about looping. We have said that one, looping involves writing what one wants to say and to find one's point of view. 
Two, it involves writing for a certain period of time without stopping. Three, looping enables the student to write the first loop for five minutes. Four, in looping, the first five minutes is the starting point for the next five minute loop. Five, the summary statement of the second loop is the starting point for the third loop. I would like you to know about the other major form of brainstorming, and this is the interpersonal type of brainstorming. This is when students are made to share their thoughts and ideas on a given stimulus with their classmates. Why don't you join and see how the teacher makes her students react interpersonally on the stimulus word hero. I think everyone has come up with a good list of items. We can now proceed to the next activity. Okay, what I'd like you to do is to group yourselves into threes or fours, and then you're going to share your work with your classmates in that group. Okay, let me see. One, two, and three, you'll form group one. Four, five, six, you'll form group two. And the people at the back, you'll be group three. Okay, please um, take along with you your list of words and phrases. Okay, are you ready, class? Yes, we are ready. Group yourselves. Group the threes, the fours, whatever. Now that you are in your respective groups, be sure to assign a leader and a rapporteur. Okay, the leader will later report on the final list of words for that certain group. Are there any questions? Yes, Russell? What are we supposed to do with this list? Mm, you are supposed to share your work, your final list, uh, your list of words with the other members of your group. Okay? You may either agree or disagree with them on certain items. Okay? But remember to come up with a final list of items later on. Is that clear? Everything's clear. Okay, you may now begin. She made them brainstorm on the stimulus word hero in groups. This is what we call brainstorming interpersonally. Let's go through the various steps the teacher employed when she asked the class to do brainstorming in groups. She did the following. One, she divided the class into small groups. Two, she made each group assign a leader or a discussant and a rapporteur. Three, she asked the group members to share their list of items with each other. Four, she made the class agree or disagree on certain items. Five, she made each group agree on a set of items. Six, she asked the group leader to report on the results of the discussion to the whole class. When you ask your students to brainstorm in groups, you can follow these suggestions. Establish the subject to be discussed. Keep the discussion on track with a facilitator or leader of the group. Encourage the participation of all class members. Encourage participants to take down notes as ideas are suggested. Do you think the class would be ready for the next step after the brainstorming session? I'm sure they would. We will take up the second pre-writing activity when we return. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Let me now take up another pre-writing technique. And this is what we call clustering. What is clustering? Clustering is a pre-writing technique where ideas are gathered into clusters around a given topic. Let's look at this classroom situation where a teacher employs clustering as a pre-writing technique. I would like you to think of as many words as possible but you would like to relate to the word food. And as you give them to me, I'm going to write them on the board around the stimulus word food. Okay, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Can I see a raise of hands? Okay, let me call on Katrina. Let's on. Let's on. Anything else? Yes. Aaron. Vegetables. Vegetables. Some more. Yes, Carl. Costly. Costly. Very good. Who else would like to recite? How about Mark? A taste. Taste. Anything else? Yes, Russell. Cook or chef. Cook or chef. Very good. Mm -hmm. Who else would like to recite? Yes, Jeffrey. Yes, yes. Yes, Okay. Some more. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good health. Right. Good health. Okay. What else you'd like to recite? Sheila. I'm the poor. Anything else? Mark? Turo, turo. Class, I think that we have come up with enough words, okay, to associate with the uh, stimulus word food. Okay. Now, class, look at the board once more. And let us look at what we have written. Okay. We have written down lechon, vegetables, costly, taste, cook or chef, fiestas, good health, poor, and turo turo. Yes, let's look at the diagram once again. What words do the students relate to food? Yes, they were lechon, vegetables, costly, taste, cook or chef, fiestas, good health, poor, turo turo. Let's go back to the classroom and see the rest of the lesson. Now I would like to find out the reasons why you associated these words with the stimulus word food. Katrina, didn't you say earlier that, didn't you mention lechon earlier? Yes ma'am. Why did you say so? Ma'am, because every one of us would like to eat good food and seemingly lechon is the favorite of one and all. Very good. Now, someone here said costly. Who was that? Yes Carl, why did you say so? Well, perhaps everyone knows that all food items nowadays are very expensive. In fact, a kilo of pork costs more than 100 pesos. Mm -hmm. Sheila, you would like to add to that? Ma'am, that's the reason why I said poor earlier. Because ma'am, the poor cannot simply afford to buy costly food items. Good point. I also remember someone uh, saying vegetables. Who is this? Yes, Aaron. Uh, Brown vegetables because these are the good foods which when eaten most of the time results in good health. Mm -hmm. Yes, huh? you'd like to add to okay. And uh, as Aaron stated, that's the reason why I associated food with good health earlier. You must have noticed the way the teacher processed the activity. She really drew out a lot of ideas from her students, didn't she? That's how important clustering is as a pre-writing technique. It does generate a hundredfold of ideas, thus enabling students to be more than prepared for writing. Once again, you may go through the following steps in teaching your students how to cluster. 
One, write the stimulus word on the board. This stimulus word should be evolved from the students with the help of the teacher. Then ask the students what come to their minds when they see the stimulus word. Two, cluster the responses on the board as they are given with the stimulus word in the center and all responses radiating outward. Three, ask students to create subclusters around major clusters. Four, time the clustering process. And five, ask students to write a short paragraph using their clusters. Six, ask them to give the paragraph a title. I will tell you about the other possible pre-writing techniques when we return. Stay tuned. other pre-writing activities aside from the many brainstorming activities we have discussed. Well, we can ask our students to do the following. First, research work. This means that the student gathers data from primary and secondary sources. The data gathered will certainly serve as input for composition writing. Second, review a movie or a television show. Be sure to give students some guidelines before viewing any show. This way, the students are somehow given a focus. Third, make students go on a field trip or on an educational tour to places of interest. This will certainly afford students with a lot of input for composition writing. There are many more ways to prepare our students for writing. One very important thing to remember, though, is the fact that we have to give them learning activities in and outside of the classroom. These activities will certainly equip students with adequate input which they can use in composition writing. We learned that, one, the process approach focuses on process rather than on product. Two, there are several pre-writing techniques which can adequately prepare students for composition writing, one of which is brainstorming. Brainstorming means storming the brain for ideas. It may come in two forms, namely, individually or interpersonally, and in groups or interpersonally. In turn, individual brainstorming comes in varying forms, and these are clustering, mapping, cubing, and looping. In the next episode, we shall take up the other stages of the process approach. So, once again, this is your host, Manshi Pasquale, saying goodbye and happy teaching.